Welcome to this evening's performance by our graduating BA dance students. Finally, I'm able to invite you to join us here in this beautiful theater, as well as from your home. Like everywhere, our students had an incredibly challenging year, learning, researching, creating, and performing in completely new ways, trying to find their artistic voice in a constantly changing environment. We had to reimagine our very physical, collaborative, and interactive art form of contemporary dance. In January, during our first season of commissioned works, the creative process shifted entirely online, with artists coming together from all over the world. Back then, we created dance films and a digital tour. This summer, we have been able to come back to our studios and theater. New dance works have been made with incredible choreographers, including Divya Castery, Kate Johnson, Tony Thatcher, Jazz Linehan, and Matthew Harding. The works encompass the creative investigations of a range of movement and dance vocabularies and multimedia explorations. As always, there's also a lot happening behind the scenes. I would like to take the opportunity to thank the costume, production, AV, and front of house teams who make all of this magic possible. And most of all, I would really like to congratulate the students for their incredible work and perseverance and celebrate their achievements today. I can't wait to see what they will be creating in the future. So enjoy the performance tonight and stick around afterwards to hear more from the choreographers and the students themselves. சொல் அவிந்து இனித அடங்கினரே மாக்கள் முனிவென்று நனந்தலை உலகமும் துஞ்சும் ஓரியான் மன்ற துஞ்சாதேனே ஓரியான் மன்ற துஞ்சாதேனே 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 the still drone of the time past midnight. All words put out, men are sunk into the sweetness of sleep. Even the far-flung world has put aside its rages for sleep. Only I am awake. Only I am awake. Only I am awake.
So the piece is based on a poem written in Tamil, um, and it's sort of surrounding themes of um, sleep and uh, restlessness and not being able to sleep. So we've been looking at Sangam poems, which are really old, um, 2,500 to 3,000 year old poems. And we've been looking at the meanings and the feelings behind them, as well as our own experience of sleeplessness. It's been so immersive, and we've been able to learn a whole new technique of dance which in Indian classical dance, which has been so challenging, but so much fun. The piece is about um, a very ancient Tamil poem. It very specifically belongs to an era that we call as the Sangam age or the Sangam period, wherein that particular age was very important in the history of India. I have been particularly obsessed with a particular poem. Um, that's to do with sleeplessness, the feelings and emotions that the larger wide world is also experiencing in terms of the peace traveling from um, a single person feeling sleepless to multiple bodies feeling sleepless and it journeys through memories, uh, through reassurance, through hope, through uncertainty. So there's a lot of uh, arc of emotional narrative going on and I've integrated all of this with Bharatanatyam aesthetics. We um, yeah, started with some more ta technical aspects um, from South Asian dance and then that kind of set the scene so then we started with some more creative ideas and that's when um, the idea for the piece was introduced. And the poem was so fascinating because it speaks about the protagonist, a female protagonist who is waiting for her beloved. And we've also been able to pick up, um, the, not the language, but parts of it. We've been able to speak through the piece. So we've been learning some of the poem in Tamir and like the word sleeplessness being Tunja Dene, which comes up in the piece a lot. So this particular word, Tunja Dene, is my favorite um, word in the poem, which means I alone I'm awake, I can't sleep. And um, I taught this very word to the students and I made them vocalize it, made them speak it in different emotional qualities. And that's become part of the piece now. I work a lot with the aesthetics of Indian classical music and the rhythms and the layering. And I'm trained, uh, born, brought up and trained in India and I work here in the UK. And I also have a background of theater, uh, physical theater, so I've been working with complicity and therein stems a lot of my work being dance theater. So there is a narrative. Um, obviously, um, we couldn't get the dancers to speak out loud in the piece due to all the restrictions that we have to follow. I didn't want them to wear masks, basically. But um, we've managed to sort of record their voices, and that's been uh, layered within the soundscape. It's been a really exciting experience for all of us. We want them to see how excited we are about finally performing on a stage, about how excited we are about performing a new style of dance, which is um, just Challenging. Challenging. It's just, yeah. yeah, it's challenging on the body and the brain because you have to make, it's so rhythmical, so you have to make everything the same and you all have to sound like it's just one person. Mm -hmm. So if one person goes wrong, then it's so, so visible and you can hear it and see it. So as a, like, as a group, we've been working so hard on getting our timings together, the speaking together. So I think the practice of how much work we've done to make the whole piece come together, we're really, will shine through. Yeah.